In this ukulele video, we're gonna talk about the difference between a high G ukulele and a low G ukulele. Hi, I'm Terry. Welcome to You Collect the Pros. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the lessons and tutorials. So one of the biggest questions I get is high G or low G? And and some people don't even know what that is. So in this video, I'm not only going to demonstrate both the sounds of a ukulele with a low G and a high G, but I'm also going to explain what that difference is. So hopefully that clears it up. What I'd like to do first is just do play, play each one of them so you can hear what each one sounds like. So that was a low G, let's go ahead and check out the high G. Okay, so you notice that I played the same progression for both pieces, but this one, which is the high G here, it has, I don't know what I like to say, more of a traditional ukulele sound, because a lot of ukuleles, especially in the soprano and the concert ukuleles, a lot of them from different manufacturers always come with a high G. And now the tenors, which is this one, a little bit of the bigger ukuleles, a lot more of them are starting to come with a high G, okay? But it's really a personal preference, okay? And I'm gonna show you some of the advantages of a low G. But first of all, let's just talk about this high G one. So remember the strings here are, a, E, C, and then G. And that's a high G. So what's interesting about it is when you get to the third string here, which is C, the fourth string is actually higher sounding than the third string. So C, the third string, and then the fourth string, G. And that's a high G, and so that's why we call it a high G. Now the limitations of this particular instrument is when you're doing any kind of scale, you're somewhat limited because it's gonna sound a little awkward when you get to that fourth string. For example, how, how that sound jumps. Which sounds a little bit awkward because it's not a low G like, like the next one I'm about to play for you. So, so that's, that's really one of the limitations. But what's cool about it is when you have that high G there, you get a lot more. All right, so now I switch to the low G, and the string names are exactly the same. So you have first string A, E, C, and then you have G, but this is where the low G is. So notice now you have the third string C, and this fourth string is now lower than that sound. And one of the keys to it is when you play um, a scale. having that extra low note, it, it actually extends the range of the instrument a little bit. But it does sound slightly different, right? You don't have so much of that traditional Hawaiian sound because you have that, that extra kind of bass note there. So if I play this same little thing, It still sounds the same, right? Because the string's not a different name. They're both G's. It's just because one's high and one's low is gonna sound a little bit different. So there's the differences between the high G and the low G. Hopefully that clears it up a little bit. They're both great. You can't go wrong either way. What I recommend is that you have one of each in your arsenal. That way you're not limited. I do find myself playing my tenor with the low G. I do like the extended range for it. And especially if you start getting into some jazz chords or scales or soloing, it is nice to have that extra string. But every time I pick up my ukulele with the high G, I always find cool sounds that you just can't get with this one with the low G. So anyway, 
Those are different. Hope that clears it up a little bit. Let me know which one you have or which one you like. I'm always curious to hear that. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. And we'll see you next time.